News Now on Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And good evening and thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 6. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. We begin with that breaking news. Dozens of people are displaced tonight after a fire in Wallingford. And the fire broke out at the Terrace Gardens Apartments near Route 5 just after noon. Fox 61's Jake Garcia is live at the scene now with the very latest on the fire. Jake? Well, Brent and Sarah, you can just see the damage left behind from this fire behind me. Uh, investigators have now changed uh, their response now to trying to secure the building. Now, investigators still trying to determine exactly what caused this fire. Now, Wallingford fire officials said they got the call just after 1230 uh, this afternoon uh, on reports of a fire as well um, here at the Terrace Garden Apartments in Wallingford. Uh, now, they did call for additional help. Um, when they arrived on the scene because they found a third floor apartment fully engulfed in flames. Eventually they were able to get that fire out, but more than two dozen people have been displaced as this entire building has been deemed uninhabitable at the moment. Fire officials say some of the living conditions may have played a role in the fire. One of the units is reported to have uh, hoarding conditions in it. Uh, and also there were uh, medical oxygen bottles in the unit, which caught fire. Uh, and obviously they fueled uh, the fire in that area. Now, two firefighters were also injured while battling those flames. Uh, they have both been said to have minor uh, injuries at this time. Uh, the Red Cross is also uh, helping those that have been displaced, but officials still trying to determine exactly what happened uh, to this uh, apartment building and what led to that fire. The fire marshal's office here in Wallingford is investigating. Live in Wallingford, Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you, Jake. New year, new tax laws, and they could save you some money. A historic state income tax cut passed last legislative session, and it's set to take effect. In fact, three tax relief measures are starting in 2024 and will come to more than 60% of state residents. Fox 61 political reporter Emma Wolfhorst joins us now with all the details. Emma? Brent, Sarah, this is what residents have been waiting for since lawmakers passed the bipartisan budget back in June. It's the first time tax rates have been cut in Connecticut since the mid-1990s. And officials say altogether these changes will reduce taxpayer burden by a total of more than $460 million. Here's what it comes down to, a decrease in the two lowest income tax rates, which is meant to target middle-class residents. That's estimated to impact more than a million people. The state is also increasing the earned income tax credit. This will show up for 2024 filers for the first time next year. The credit is being raised from 30.5% of the federal credit to 40%. Lastly, the state is expanding a phase out option for senior pensions. So even more people will be able to take advantage of not paying income tax on retirement savings like their 401k, 403b and 457b plans. But let's go back to that largest income tax cut in state history. The 3% rate is dropping to 2% and the 5% rate is dropping to 4.5. This means joint filers are going to save about $600 with single filers saving around 300. Now, not just GOP leadership, but most lawmakers have told me they'd like to see this go even further. But Governor Lamont and Treasurer Eric Russell today, as well as Comptroller Sean Scanlon, applauding what was accomplished while respecting the so-called fiscal guardrails, saying this proves you can have tax cuts and a full rainy day fund. Today is a great day, but it's not too long ago that we had some pretty bad days here in this building. Unless we stay disciplined to those guardrails and adhere to them going forward, we will not be able to continue to offer that relief to people. And that rainy day fund is at capacity right now, about $3.3 billion for the state. These tax cuts are baked into the 2024-2025 budget, but lawmakers are already looking to possibly pass new financial relief in the upcoming session next year. Sarah, Brent. 
All right, thank you, Emma. New details tonight. A second person has died in an apartment fire in New Britain. The fire started in the attic of the home on Belden Street. The man who jumped from the building is the second person to die. The first person was a woman who was found dead in the home. The fire is still under investigation. New tonight, a New Haven police sergeant faces domestic violence charges. Police say Louis D. Crescenzo has been on paid administrative leave since May when an internal affairs investigation began. He was released on $5,000 bond. DeCrescenzo has been a member of the New Haven Police Department since 2009. The man accused of shooting a man in a Bloomfield intersection has waived extradition in Arizona. Devante Swabi will be brought back to Connecticut to face murder charges. He's accused of shooting and killing Timothy Ross on Cottage Grove Road earlier this month. Swabi will be held on $5 million bond. He's due in court next month. And state police are investigating after a man was hit and killed on Route 9 in Berlin. Police say Damien Liberta was hit around 6 last night and he was pronounced dead on scene. No word on any other injuries in the accident. State police are asking anyone who might have witnessed what happened to give them a call. And today marks one year since 89-year-old Eugenia Yurovsky was hit and killed in West Hartford, and now police are renewing calls for information as the search continues for the suspect. There is a $26,000 reward for information leading to an arrest in the case. Yurovsky was hit while walking at the intersection of Boulevard and Whiting Lane on December 20th of 2022. Police say she was hit by an SUV, which is believed to be a 2010 to 2015 GMC. Anyone with any information about what happened should call West Hartford Police. Connecticut's quiet corner was anything but quiet after Monday's powerful storm. Utility and tree crews are still crisscrossing the area to get people back on the grid. Fox 61's Matt Karen visited the town of Pomfret, where hundreds of people spent a third day without power. Well, here in eastern Connecticut, some of these rural communities are some of the last residents to get back online. Here in Pomfret, there's still about 250 people in the dark. They were all promised to get their power back by the end of tonight. The hum of generators echoed through the rural woods of eastern Connecticut Wednesday. This was the scene in Pomfret. The storm was longer in duration and more intense. Maury Nicholson is the first selectman. We still have a closed state road and a closed town road because communication lines haven't been dealt with um, adequately. Nicholson told Fox 61 about how so-called 100 year storms seem to happen nearly every year, wrecking yeah. havoc on town infrastructure. The intensity of the storms that we're having is clearly different from anything we've had before and the damage that's being done to our roads and our bridges um, and our, uh, you know, our grid is just changing. It doesn't help that Eastern Connecticut is also battling a scourge of invasive wood destroying insects like the gypsy moth, longhorned beetle and emerald ash borer. They're standing dead trees now and you bring in a 50 mile an hour wind and you know, you're just asking for trouble. Tree damage isn't the only problem facing Pomfret. Consistent flooding has caused damage to two of the town's bridges, including here on Taft Pond Road. Just deemed structurally deficient by the state, it'll eventually have to be replaced, cutting off residents who live on the other side. We, we're having a good time. We, uh, it doesn't affect us too badly. You know, we're just taking it easy, reading books and uh, sipping uh, hot cider. And the Sternies were taking day three without power in stride. No sooner did we wrap up our interview when the lights came back on. An early Christmas miracle. The guys on the on the line are doing a great job. Fox 61 following the utility crews from stop to stop as they made quick work of the remaining outages, bringing literal light at the end of a tunnel to rural residents and a storm they won't soon forget. That wind was pretty scary. I mean, I watched the trees pretty much all day Monday morning, just swaying back and forth everywhere. So I knew there was going to be quite a bit of damage when we woke up for sure. Residents here tell us that with each passing year, it seems as though power outages become more frequent and more prolonged. But they also say they're grateful for the hard work of the utility linemen who get them reconnected to modern society. Reporting in Pomfret, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station.
after all that rain, it is really nice to kind of have a break of yep. several days of drying yeah, out. We can appreciate it. Catch our breath a little mm -hmm. bit. Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us now with a look at the forecast, Rach. Yeah, we won't get a storm in here until maybe about a week or so from now, so we can continue to kind of clean up any mess that might be left over. Temperatures right now are in the upper 30s for the Hartford area, mid 40s though in New Haven and 30s for most of the rest of the state. And it does look like it will be a bit cooler heading into the day tomorrow, but really close to average for this time of year and nothing, you know, too out of the ordinary for the end of December. I did want to show you and we were talking about how people are still cleaning up some of the storm damage and getting the lights back on again, but there's also still river flooding across the state. Minor flooding for the Housatonic River that has already crested and river levels are starting to come down. The Farmington River at Simsbury has also already crested and water levels are dropping, but water levels are just cresting now at the Connecticut River in Hartford and the same is true for the Connecticut River at East Haddam, still climbing before cresting heading into the day tomorrow. Low temperatures tonight falling back through the 30s and eventually into the upper 20s as we head towards daybreak tomorrow. 28 in Waterbury, near the 30 degree mark for the Hartford area and for New Haven. So a cool start to the day and temperatures just don't really budge as we head through the afternoon. So we're near 30 degrees at 7 a.m. But if I stop the clock here at noon, we're looking at temperatures that are in the mid to upper 30s and that's about as high as we get heading through the day tomorrow. The chill sticks around into Friday for the first full day of winter, but it doesn't last into the weekend and certainly not heading into Christmas Day. We'll take a look at some of those warmer numbers coming up.